Facing a challenging future, what is the way forward for Kenyan banking industry? Good evening. Many thanks for joining us. This is the Trading Bell. My name is O'Brien Kiman. We are coming to you from the trading floor of Nairobi Securities Exchange. And of course, we are here to alert you on how the market has performed. And of course, we also look at the larger economy and help you break down the figures. Later on, I'll be talking to Eric Musau. He's a market analyst at Standard Investment Bank. He will be explaining to us why is the market behaving funny? Well, that is an interview that of course you don't want to miss. But for now, we sit down with John Gashora. He's a managing director of NIC Group, and I'll be posing to him this question, what is the way forward for local banks? John, Hello, thank you very much for joining us. Absolutely. Karibu sana to the trading bell. Asante. Please. Thank you. Uh, first of all, I want to find out, I mean, you've been in the banking industry uh, since 1956. Uh, actually, 57, right? 59, to be precise. F 59, mm. to be precise. Uh, almost six decades in the banking industry. That's, that's a long time, and you must be having a tremendous amount of experience. Um, is this the worst time, would you say, for the banking industry? Absolutely not. Um, I, I mean, you know, over, over that length of time, uh, I'd say we have seen some much tougher times. Bearing in mind as well that we were not always a bank. I mean, um, NIC started as an um, instrument finance uh, house. You know, that's why we're very big in asset finance, which is our legacy. Mm. And actually, we did not convert into a bank until in the 90s. Yeah? So, uh, but I would say even within that period of time that we've been a full-fledged commercial bank, mm. I think we've seen some pretty tough times. I mean, mm -hmm. there were times when uh, the banking industry was uh, fully regulated from an interest um, interest rate perspective and there were times when this economy was not doing well at all so we have seen much worse times I would say uh, th what we are going through um, is um, it's pretty short-term pain mm -hmm. for the banking industry mm -hmm. yes and uh, in terms of your operations I mean we have seen a trend since uh, the, the new banking amendment law came into effect yes. Uh, whereby almost all banks are downsizing or even right sizing, have you been impacted, or are you in the in, in the pa in the process of doing this? Look, we were impacted, um, and and as you rightly point out, a number of banks have had to look at their strategy. I, I think I think one of the things that this new law called upon the banks to do is to really look at their efficiencies, yeah, mm -hmm. to really look at their banking models, and I think everybody is going through that process. We have gone through that process, and in fact, last year in November, we announced that we released a number of our employees. Mm -hmm. We have already gone th through the process. For mm -hmm. us, we did it quickly. Um, we knew exactly what we needed to change, and the change has already taken place for us. Mm -hmm. yes. The number that we have is that um, you, know, you had to let go of some 32 of your senior managers. Was the number increased uh, um, later on, or this is the number that it has? That was the number. Actually, what we did, we eliminated 40 positions. 40 positions. And of those 40 positions, we mm -hmm. had 32 people, or what you call bums on the seat, people who were there. So that's why we said the number of actually affected people were 32, mm -hmm. but we eliminated 40 positions. Mm -hmm. uh, that's the only number that, that we have done. And somebody may want to find out, I mean, by sending home 32 people, what significant impact will this have on your balance sheet or on your operations, actually? Look, as I said, it's, it's not a matter of just cost cutting. Mm -hmm. It's a question of strategy. So what we actually are doing is we're looking at our strategy and saying, are there some areas we need to de-emphasize? Are there some areas we need to re-emphasize? Yeah? Um, are there some new skills that we need to bring into the market mm -hmm. for the future? And that's the process we went through. So it's not so much a cost-cutting exercise. Mm -hmm. And I think when people hear people are being let go, they think a cost-cutting exercise. Actually, for us, it's not necessarily that. Um, it does not mean that we are done with hiring. Um, it just means that our strategy called for perhaps a change uh, in a bit of a direction. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, was this some, some sort of a knee-jerk reaction or this was you know, something that was in the pipeline? Um, because there, there's a feeling that uh, you know, a lot of banks in this market, you know, they, 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 they took some drastic measures after the, 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 the law was enacted. 
Yeah, look, I, I think one of the strengths um, of leadership is being able to respond to the prevailing circumstances, yeah? Mm -hmm. and, uh, and I think the reason I wouldn't say a knee-jerk reaction, mm -hmm. I would say it is a revaluation of strategy. And I say that bearing in mind that when things change, you have to reevaluate our strategy. I think mm -hmm. when we talked about this law uh, as a banking sector, mm -hmm. we were quite clear that when it comes on board, a number of things will happen. Mm -hmm. Everybody has to relook really to be a bit leaner, and that was in important. Two, we talked about going a lot more digital, yeah, if, if this happens. Three, to relook really at our branch networks and see where, because we all carry certain expenses with no returns. Some mm -hmm. branches don't make money. Relook really at those as well. And I think that's what the banks are going through that process of relooking really at their strategies, yeah. Well, how can you operate more efficiently in the new normal? Mm -hmm. Yes. And uh, uh, if we were to reflect uh, um, on, the, uh, on, on the nine months re uh, results that you released uh, in, yes. in, in November, yes. uh, we saw your payroll rise by about 2.3% uh, uh, yes. to, 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 to around, was it? One point, was it 2.2 billion shillings? It was about 2.2 billion. 2.2 mm -hmm. billion shillings. Mm -hmm. So by sending home or by merging some of the uh, uh, units that you have talked about, how much do you expect this will come down by what margin? Not, not a lot. As you observed, I mean, the, the numbers we sent home were not such a massive number. Mm -hmm. And as I said, it wasn't necessarily a cost-cutting exercise. So um, in terms of our savings, they, we will have some savings. It wouldn't be huge. Uh, that's one. Two is, whenever you uh, go through uh, this process, mm -hmm. it takes a time. It takes a period of time for you to recover the expenses you incur mm -hmm. when you let people go, um, and we expect that payback to be about a year or so for us. But uh, we, we don't want to tout the number uh, of you know in terms of savings, and mm -hmm. I don't think we should really talk about savings. Last year, I mean, if you look at you know the results at nine months. Um, the 2.3 percent was probably one of the lowest growth in the industry from a staff cost perspective, mm. because we have a very good handle on how we control our staff costs, and that will continue to be our thing that we have to control our staff costs. Mm -hmm. yes. and, and when you talk about your loan book, um, uh, you know, grew yes. uh, or, or dropped by almost two billion yes. uh, shillings in the period. Uh, what did we had an impact? Was 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 the low capping? Was the interest capping low had an impact on these? No, you see, those results were up to September. Mm -hmm. The the low capping interest that came, came in, in, in August. In uh, well, it was signed in August, but really took effect mm -hmm. for us actually in October. Mm -hmm. So the results that we announced them would have no, uh, they would not reflect any effect mm -hmm. of the of this law. I think. Where you start seeing uh, the effect of this low is perhaps not even in quarter three per se. Mm -hmm. I think you start seeing it now going forward because you know it takes time for once somebody applies for a loan to the point of actually drawing on that loan. There's a period of time. There's a period of time. There's yeah. a period of time, and so is the is the loans that would have come now after that you start showing those effects. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So are we likely to see the situation becoming worse or improving in terms of? in terms of uh, the, the growth of your loan book? Look, I think, I think um, if you look at the results that were released by the central bank, I mm. think it was in the media, yeah. that the growth in private credit is an all-time low at 4.1% as yeah. of December. Mm. Now, um, there are a number of reasons for that. Uh, because it's not fair to just say the interest rate cap is what's causing it. Because mm -hmm. actually, if you look, through the whole of last year, 2016, mm -hmm. that number was coming down to end up at 4.1. So there was a, an economic problem mm -hmm. that we must all address. It. And as well as now we have this law in place. Mm -hmm. So I think in the medium term, uh, or I should say the short term, I don't expect things to dramatically improve. Uh, I expect that in the next, you know, until the election or thereafter, mm -hmm. I expect to see a very subdued growth uh, in terms of private credit. Mm -hmm. Yes. And uh, you operate in three countries, yes. Uganda, Kenya, and Tanzania. But of course, we know that Kenya is your biggest operation. Yes. Um, in the long term, or mid term to long term, are you, are you, are you, are you eyeing any other markets? You know, uh, <laughs> the... 
We think of strategy in terms of obviously the three phases, short term, medium term and long term. I would be lying to say that in the long term we are not eyeing other countries. Yes, we are. I think it is in our, it has to be absolutely an ambition to grow into a number of other countries. Mm -hmm. But I think in the short term, uh, that's not on the cards. For us, what we decided uh, during our current strategic cycle was that we need to consolidate our presence in the three countries. Okay. And if you look in the last two years, we have made additional investments in both Uganda and Tanzania to mm -hmm. grow those businesses. Because mm -hmm. it's our belief, uh, our belief is that we shouldn't be judged by the number of flags that we have. We must be judged by the, the value of those flags. Mm -hmm. Yeah, And so for me to sit here and say I've got five flags mm -hmm. and all of them earning nothing, mm -hmm is worth a lot less than saying I've got two additional flags beyond Kenya mm -hmm. and by the way they are sizable. So for us in the short term, our goal will continue to be to invest in those countries. For yes. 22 years, I mean you've been uh, 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 um, uh, uh, in the banking industry. Yes. Currently you're now a tier two lender. You have been planning to, 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 to jump to the tier one lender. Um, what are the plans so far? Look, I, I think our, our current strategic cycle actually called for retooling of our balance sheet mm -hmm. as opposed to jumping to tier one. Mm -hmm. yeah, well, so we set particular goals on return on equity. We set particular goals on cost of funds. We set particular goals on net interest margin. And those goals we have met. Yeah? Those goals now have been met. Mm. So I think as we work on our next strategic cycle, we will now be looking into that move in towards the tier one. But I think so far what we have sort of, you know, the, the, the board had mandated us is to say, actually, we must first retool our balance sheet mm -hmm. for growth. As yes. we wrap up, I want yes. to hear from you finally. Uh, you were appointed by KDIC, you know, to, uh, to manage the assets and liabilities of, uh, of Imperial Bank, which is under receiver receivership. Yes. Uh, what is the status of, of, of this process so far? Yes, so first I want to correct that we were not appointed to manage. Uh, you were? We were appointed to advise. Uh, two, oh, two, two different, okay, two to different advise we are, The term is we are consultant mm -hmm. yeah, as opposed to managing. Mm -hmm. uh, KDIC remains the manager of, of, of what's going on there. Yeah. I would say, look, since we were appointed, we have made some good progress, um, I would say, because, you know, our job, as stated then, was to advise KDIC on strategies to what, one, on the assets, what to do. And I think one area we have been very good at um, advising KDIC is on what to do with the loan assets. I think we have done a phenomenal job to help with collections, making sure customers know what to do. Mm -hmm. um, I think we have done quite well on that. The yep. second job we had was to make disbursements to, uh, to depositors. One, we have worked with KDIC to advise them when, how, uh, to make those disbursements. And we have made two disbursements since mm -hmm. we were appointed. And that process is continuing, yeah? Obviously, there are other things that we are supposed to do within that agreement. Mm -hmm. For example, mm -hmm. it's stated that we shall do some due diligence and if in agreement, uh, we shall then be assuming certain assets and possibly certain liabilities. Mm. As you know, Brian, there has been a number of court cases, yeah. and those have slowed the process, mm -hmm. um, uh, that process significantly. But I think, um, you know, I think from where we are, uh, the, the larger part of our mandate has been executed quite well. Mm -hmm. yes. And uh, uh, w without prejudicing the proceedings in yes. court, uh, from your perspective and from where you see it yes. as, as an advisor to KDIC, uh, do you think that um, it makes any business sense? to revive this bank and uh, make it continue, or the best thing is to, re to, to, to liquidate it? You know, unfortunately, anything I say will be prejudicing. <laughs> so you, so, you, so you, you prefer that you keep quiet on Absolutely. this? Absolutely. John Gashara, thank you very much for joining us here on The Trading Bet. Thank you, Brian. We wish you all Appreciate the best. It. Thank, thank you. you very much. John Gashara, Chief Executive Officer, NIC Bank, joining us here on the trading bell to help us understand where NIC Bank is, where it's going, and the challenges that the banking industry is facing. You have heard it from the man. This is the trading bell. We are back shortly.
for a look of how the Nairobi Securities Exchange performed last week. Eric Musao, he's a market analyst at Standard Investment Bank. He's now joining us here so that he can help us put these figures into perspective and, of course, help, the, help us break them down. Thank you very much indeed, Eric. All the four indices of the market, they are up by about 4%. And we have seen banks, especially big banks, you know, releasing their financial results. I want to find out from you what has, their, what has the, been their impact on the market? I think most of the investors were quite happy with the numbers. Uh, slightly better than expected. The, the impact, especially in the fourth quarter, was expected to be a bit more severe. Uh, but what the banks have done also is to have a generous dividend payout. Mm -hmm. and, and we saw most of the banks bouncing up on the dividend because you're seeing yields of around 10%. And, and most investors, investors are quite happy with, with that payout. Mm -hmm. And uh, um, when we talk about big banks, I mean, we saw Equity Bank, um, you know, releasing uh, figures that were not expected. Uh, and when you look at, it is not featured anywhere. It is not in the top gainers. It is not in, in the top losers. It is not one of the top movers. A very interesting uh, 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 scenario here. I think uh, initially the, the, the banks had already suffered a lot in terms of the corrections. So they might not feature here as much because, you know, they, they had already been punished by investors so much. Mm. So a lot of it has just been a modest increase. I think the one probably you're going to see this week is probably Diamond Trust and that, that announced uh, just this week. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and the numbers, you, you, you'll see the, they've actually performed well. There's, they're also doing an acquisition, Habib Bank. Mm -hmm. uh, they have common shareholding. Uh, but generally, the sector have, has held up quite, quite well. And, and you know, over, over the last three, four weeks, the, the sector has done really well. Mm -hmm. And who is supporting these improvements that we are seeing? Do we, is it foreign investors or domestic investors? So we've been seeing activity mainly from foreign investors, mm -hmm. especially beginning of the year. Uh, this week, we've seen activity at around 60% foreign investors. Uh, the, the, so it means local activity has actually been picking up. Mm -hmm. uh, and so it's, it's still foreign investors but increasingly local investors are starting to participate. Mm -hmm. And talking about you know, domestic investors, we saw today the National Treasury um, launching the much-awaited M Akiba platform whereby you know, small investors uh, can purchase you know, bonds and bills you know, through their mobile phones. What impact do you expect this to have on the local market? So the pilot program involves just 150 million shillings, uh, but I think it's a very important step forward uh, in, in, in terms of diversifying the market and providing the, an alternative solution mm -hmm. uh, to, to investors. Uh, we've, you know, most of the retail investors really cannot you know, afford the, the challenges of going to open a CDS account from central bank and so forth. So this is really having a mobile platform enables them to make this purchase over the mobile phone and the, that's, that's a good first step. Mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, uh, when we talk about uh, top gainers, top losers and top movers, who do you expect to see in the top gainers next week? So we have Safaricom starting People start looking at it a lot more keenly, mm -hmm. and it's already been moving up. Mm -hmm. the, the, the end ends in March, so results expected in May. So we're going to see a bit of activity there. Uh, the bank's still going to continue to feature. Mm -hmm. um, some of the other companies we're expecting the numbers, Kenya Re, uh, mm -hmm. is about to announce. So again, in terms of the insurance sector, we're going to see a bit of activity there depending on how the numbers come out. Mm -hmm. yeah. Finally, um, in the top losers, we had GBD Holdings, we had EGAD, Sunlam Kenya, Express Kenya, same time investment. Uh, do you expect these scenario to change or we expect to see, or who do you expect to see in the next week's our, our program? So we're waiting for Jubilee numbers mm -hmm. and, and depending on how the performance is and what dividend they actually declare, that, that could change. Uh, we also have same term, uh, you know, in terms of uh, how how will they perform? Uh, what is the expectation of the, the launch, the two rivers, and mm. some of the projects that they are working on? It's now trading at a substantial discount to net asset value, so mm. they, there's room for that stock to, to start picking up. Great, yeah. Eric. Many thanks for joining us here. Thank you. It's a pleasure. Eric Musa is a market analyst at Standard Investment Bank, joining us here to help us break down the figures and of course help us understand. 
uh, what they mean for us as investors and of course as shareholders. This is the trading bell, stay right here. Real estate investment trusts are, are really uh, the property market, but now in instruments uh, which essentially are liquid. So it means as an investor you can sell in and out of your property, but this time you have an instrument which is actually listed in the market. And the way you make money from them is, is really to buy low and sell high. Uh, you have different types of instruments. so. A D rate involves, it's called, in full, is called a development rate. And this is really an instrument which involves development of a property to completion. An income rate is where you get the rental income and it's paid over, over the year. So all the income substantially is paid to an investor in the instrument. But to make money really is to buy low and sell high. Man, oh man, a very interesting historical fact about the Nairobi Securities Exchange bringing us to the end of our, our program for today. Many thanks for your time. We always welcome your interactions with us. You can always do so through our various communication channels. Our SMS line is 22162. Our Facebook page is The Trading Bell TV Show. Our Twitter handle is at The Trading Bell. My name is O'Brien Kimani and my Twitter handle is at O'Brien Kimani. We we'll welcome your suggestions and of course your compliments. And even when investment gets hunky-dory, we always encourage you to send your questions uh, through uh, those various channels. And always remember uh, the NSC Investment Challenge is registration is currently ongoing. For more information, always log on to their website www.nnc. Now I'll take you back to Broadcasting House. Have yourself a good evening. <laughs>